to address an issue with a friend of mine, uh, Naldo Reeves. Um, and I wrote something to kind of commemorate the uh, occasion. And I'm going to read that out now. Uh, we're here today to discuss a time and a woman with a beautiful spirit. The time in question, October 20th, 2017. The woman with the beautiful spirit merged with an angelic character, Ronnie Reeves a loving mother of two, and then wife to my guest here today, Arnaldo Reeves. Uh, Ronnie was a very warm and welcoming, radiant individual, an extremely sweet person. I had the pleasure of meeting her on several occasions and even worked with her for a short time. All I ever witnessed from her was pleasantness and peace. Now I want you to pay close attention to the words I use to describe um, Ronnie. Beautiful, angelic, loving, warm, welcoming, sweet, pleasant, and peaceful. I believe in my heart that that truly describes her as a whole. I can't imagine that any of those words would come close to describing the monstrous, grotesque act of her unknown assailant who managed to extinguish her bright, glowing, magnificent light from this world. May God have mercy on your soul, whoever you are. Definitely, definitely. I appreciate that. That was yeah. definitely heartfelt yeah. Thank you. Thank you. introduction. I definitely appreciate that, definitely. Um, I think I want to start off by just basically asking you, like, uh, how did y'all meet, you know? What, how did y'all meet? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, man, straight up, we met. It was in the ninth grade. I was in ninth grade. She was in ninth grade, and I never knew. I never knew, but it was something that stood out with her. That you know, I knew I could, I could, I could. You know, I, I didn't know it was gonna be anything at first. You know, but she just had the look that you know, I could see the eyes in the future. Something you know, but yeah, definitely. That we, that's how we met in ninth grade. You know, we took classes together, you know. She was a smart one in every class, but yeah, definitely since. So that was probably 1995. So do the math. <laughs> definitely a long time, but yeah, ninth grade. And you knew she was young. Did you know that from the first time y'all met, or did you had to, did it have to grow, she had to grow on you, or? She definitely, we had to grow on each other more. Probably I had to grow on her because, like I say, she was, she was definitely, you know, she was definitely, you know, stunning and like, I mean, it was just mutual. But like I say, we didn't know that until we graduated. You know, we was in our uh, second year of college when we realized, you know, we might, you know, and that was like 2001. So do the math again. <laughs> definitely a long time, but yeah, definitely. Though. We, she probably had grown me more. <laughs> okay, so what, that her being intellectual, you think that's what made her stand out to you, or well, the way she treated you, or it definitely she was definitely intellectual, smart. I mean, down to earth. I mean, she she checked out the boxes, and like I say, but like I say, we we never knew we was gonna be a thing until you know we were just. Basically, it just like when people say you fall in love and you find your soulmate, and you know, like I say, her intellect stood out to everybody she ever came in contact with. But like I say, it was she's just a beautiful soul. Like I mean, since I met her in 1995, I 
I never heard him tell a lie I, I, to anybody, you know. So I can say, just a beautiful soul, you know. I, I can't. Uh, the time that I spent around, I, I can't even imagine this, that she would ever even get angry. I never even imagine her getting angry. Not saying that she never. Yeah, yeah, angry, yeah, yeah. She I, ain't, couldn't, I couldn't see that. Yeah, too many people probably haven't seen her get angry. You know, like I say, you know, there too many people ain't seen her get angry. And like I say, she just. A pleasant person to be around, and that's just her whole aura. Every you know, and, and like I say, everybody uh, attests to this. You know, it's not like on the only person that know this. You know, <laughs> but everybody can you know basically attest to you know she was just a beautiful soul inside out, and you know everybody you know she wasn't no loud person. You know, very quiet. Not you know. No, 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 just, you know, very quiet, but she very observant. She paying attention to everything, you know, and like I say, she just, you know, uh, just a very unique type of person, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving from that, y'all graduated from college. And yeah. Decided y'all want to get married. Or did well, we didn't college? just, yeah, we did, it's, it's a long, you know, we didn't just decide we were going to get married, and, you know, like I say, I'm thinking uh, sometime around 2001, we tried out, uh, we tried our hands in the, you know, barber beautician business, like, you so know. Y'all both agreed to do that? Yeah, together? yeah. Uh -huh. Mutual, like a, a thing y'all well, agreed to go in together? Or? We definitely didn't go into it together. It started as a very, I say, opportunistic, like, uh just go with the wind type of thing. I was uh I was down my buddy uh shop in Sparta and uh that's where we started at. We started in Sparta. We didn't start everybody was like say okay they started in middle we didn't start in middle. We started in Sparta Georgia on Spring Street. But um uh, yeah uh one of my buddies had a uh barber shop down there and um you know things didn't go how he planned it to go and um uh, I end up just trying out. Let me let me see if I can manage a shop. You know, and like I say, I'm 21 years old at the time. Let me see if I can manage a shop. And like I say, um, everything uh, it was pretty good. And a lot of people down there were like, they would like to see a braider in the shop. And uh, so I was like, I at that time really wasn't nobody doing natural hair. How I say so, like natural hair. She's natural hair queen. And like I say, this. Early two thousand one, and I was like, I know somebody that do natural hair. Mm -hmm. So I said, Ronnie, you want you know come down here and try your hand and being a beautician and doing natural hair and like and back then they didn't even have like you know uh, beautician laws against braiders because they were doing natural hair. They didn't have to use. They didn't have any restrictions. They didn't have any restrictions because yeah. it was really <laughs> never been done. It, you know, a braider doing natural hair, we can't say she's doing, per, you know, and yeah. so she came and like she, she hit, she, you know, and you know, she got a lot of customers like, I think uh, micro braids or something was out back then and uh, you know, she did them and she did them by herself and you know, in the time that she did them, man, you know, and you know, looking at her hand, you know, it's unbelievable. But that's how, um, and you know, and that's that's where we started at. And like I say, two thousand and one, we was in Sparta, and we tried that. As I, you know, we didn't even know we were, you know, young entrepreneurs at the time. We were just, you know, really fresh out of high school, second year of college. And like I say, that's that's how we became partners in, you know, barbering and being a beautician. I say braytician because like I say, she was before way before her her time with the with the hair. Okay. Now let's get to the love. What the love? We wanna uh, we wanna hear about the love. What the love kicked in it. <laughs> oh yeah, the love kicked in. And uh I'm gonna be very frank. I'm I'm gonna be very frank about everything, you know. And I'm gonna say the love kicked in Really, around in that time, and uh, that was like I say, two thousand and one, and 
Uh, I would, like I say, I want to be frank about the situation, and you know, and like I say, we started, you know, in high school together. We didn't we didn't see each other as being compatible at the time, you know, and um, like I say, uh, right around that time, uh, I'm gonna be straight up. She was in a abusive relationship, you know, and you know, like I say, she's so quiet and uh, she's so she's so humble, you know. You yeah, she she was, a, she was a very easy yeah very it, it, exactly. Speaker. And like I say, um, if I haven't seen if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, you know, I probably you know. And like I say, that was just the first situation where, you know. I had to step in and no, we, you know, she ain't, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to let you do that around me, you know? Mm -hmm. And like I say, from that point, you know, it developed, you know, and like I say, you became the protector. I became basically <laughs> the protector. And like I say, you know, and like I say, ever since then, that was 2001. And, uh, we had our first kid, Amaris, in 2003. So, you know, okay. the love, that's where it came it, it from. Grew. It, it, it grew. It grew. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yes, sir. It manifested mm -hmm. from that point. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So, uh, you got, what, two kids, right? Y'all got two kids? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, boy and a girl? No, no, no. Two girls. Two, two girls. girls. Okay. Dominique, uh, she's, she just turned 10. Okay. And uh, Amaris, she 20. Yeah. Okay. So. 20? Yeah, Ooh, I got a, I got a, yeah, I got a adult kid. Oh, see, yeah. this, this is why yeah. I like to do this because, like I said, raw, just kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I just we'll find our way. Yeah, to yeah. Like I said, this this live, you know, <laughs> this live. Like I say, I don't go live, but you know, for this, my this first time, uh, if people didn't know that this is my first time ever going live, I've okay. never been live before. Okay. But I just felt like this this uh, particular interview deserved that. You know what I'm saying? I really do. Feel I like definitely, it. I definitely yeah. appreciate you know having me on your platform yeah, too. Like I said, you know, shoot, I've been knowing you so long. I mean, definitely. for y'all that don't know, uh, we just established that right before uh, we started the cameras up that uh, we actually worked together for about what a year and a half. You said? Yeah, it was about yeah, a year and a half. I'm a master barber. A lot of people probably that watching may not know that, but I'm a master barber, and so is he. So I guess you you are a master barber, aren't you? I, I got mine from working with those. <laughs> hey man, hey man, I had to do apprenticeship. I didn't go to school. I did <laughs> apprenticeship on those Clark. Y'all already know. Pro tell you go plug them. You know, it, yeah, that's one. <laughs> okay. Now let's get to the. I guess we don't got all the other introduction part out the way. We don't did the the romance part. Yeah, meeting. yeah, yeah. Now let's do the the date in question. October 17th, October 20th, October 20th, 20th yes, 2017. 20, yeah. Let's get to that point. Uh, I guess, uh, what was that day like? You know, like prior to? Oh, prior to? I mean, it's funny because like, like I was, I was just getting to a point where, you know, like this life, you know, this, this is, you know, like, I just knew, you know, like, we together, we've been together 17 years, and, you know, we're going to be together the next 17 years. years. Were y'all in, did y'all have any friction, static, or any kind of uh, problems or whatever? Did y'all have any of that going on at that time? Or? That, that, that I, one, I, I don't know, because yeah, I've never, yeah, we didn't, yeah, again, yeah, people, we, I yeah. didn't ask him anything prior to, yeah. I don't know what he may have done or what the situation was like. I don't know much about anything. I just know a little bit about what happened. Yeah. And this is my opportunity to ask. Definitely, you know. definitely. But yeah. no, definitely definitely not at that time. Like I say, we this this love. We you know, like I say, she had a point in her career where she knew, you know, how she wanted to use her education. And like I say, it was, you know, and that that was the crazy thing, how like it was you know, different. We'll we'll text, but like I say, the whole the whole week prior to that, we just called each other. Really, you mm -hmm. know, we just the communication, everything great. We like I say, we work beside each other, three mm -hmm. you know, three four feet apart every day, mm -hmm. and we that that's it. We work 
hand in hand, you know, and that's how we do our thing. And like I say, when no friction, like like no static, everything was peaceful. Every every definitely everything was peaceful. Definitely that day. And like I say, you know, we went you know, like I say, we, we loved each other, you know. We didn't you know, we ain't did y'all have any regular arguments or, or what was did you think you argued more than a normal couple or I can't no, I, I don't know how much a normal couple argue. You, you know what I'm saying? Like like I like say, you know, like I say disagreement, you know, we might have a disagreement Every day at the barbershop, you feel what I'm saying? Like this, you know, and mm -hmm. like I say, but no, nah, I never like, see y'all have no disagreement. How long did I work down there with y'all? About a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Never like y'all have a disagreement. I mean, like I say, I you, guess that was behind the scenes. I mean, you'll never see yeah. me and her have a disagreement. You know what I'm saying? That ain't that. That's not how we would do each other. You know, yeah. like I say, if if me or her, we got any problem with whatever, we are gonna talk to each other. You know, and like I say, now nah, and like I say. Our business ain't everybody business the same as everybody business. It's not our business, you know. Like I say, that's how we live, you know. Like I say, we we been like this since, you know. Like I say, two thousand two thousand one, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Like much love, you know. Like I say, like I say, I can't answer to the question how much you know another couple might argue. But like I say, we we, we might have a disagreement every day, you know. Like I say, we yeah, end of the night, you know. <laughs> That would be a little bit. Yeah, that would be a yeah. little bit above more than normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, so uh, that day started and it progressed and it went. You know, you know, progressed through that day. Like what, what happened after? Yeah, like you know, just a basically a normal, you know, work day. You know, we uh, we actually I picked her up. You know, from well, she was working at um, since what, what time was it? <clears throat> it was around probably like three years, like you know, three years, three thirty, you know. I'm thinking, so yeah, I I picked her up, you know, uh, up there, and um, so uh, after that, uh, she took me to the shop. You know, she took our kid home. You know, I had Dominique with me from mm -hmm. uh, when I went to pick up, and I think we picked Amira's up together from the high school. And like, uh, she dropped me off. She went, you know, dropped them off. And uh, but like I say, the only thing like it, it was crazy because she had a purple charger. You know, mm -hmm. that's what she drive. You know, every day. But uh, just so happened, uh, it was the silver Toyota that, you know, her, her uncle had. That's why I, ended, I had to go pick up in the silver Toyota. Mm -hmm. um, but like I say, it was just, that day was, she was driving a different car, you know. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, I was driving the car, and I picked her up from uh, the school, and she took the kids uh, to her house, um, to her grandma's house, her uncle, uh, um, mm -hmm. to 12. She took the kids out there and she came back and we she did some heads and I cut some hair and like I say, everything was, you know, on on our end, everything was all love and, you know, end of the night. You know, uh she went and got me something to eat from uh cookout. She went and got me something to eat from cookout. And uh like I say, end of the night after uh like I told him, I, I was playing the game. Then, like, you know, me and her had, like, 30 minutes together, and she was trying to go, you know, where the kids were, I, her uncle, her grandma house. And um, that was basically, you know, how that night ended, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I got I wake up to a call from my cousin saying. What time you know, was it? Oh, and so that it was, it was early in the morning. It was you know well, it wasn't light or anything. It really wasn't light. It okay. really wasn't light. That was I know mostly about the whole situation. It really wasn't light. So you know it was very wee hours in the morning. You know, and a cousin called me and be like, uh, well, you know, uh, Ronnie uh, got shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what you mean? I'm thinking. 
maybe he's talking about something, well, I, you know. And he was like, she ain't live. And, you know, and from that, I was like, I'm I'm shook. You know, everything turned black. You feel what I'm saying? Because, like I say, I just didn't, you know, I just didn't expect that to be on a phone call. And, like yeah. I say, that was, you know, how that morning played out. And uh, So when did the reality set in for you that that was the actual case, you know? It went, how long did it take for that to dawn on you that this was actually real? I... I had to ride that, you know, scratch to her grandma house to check on my kids, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, I'm riding, I, you know, and he said it happened when she was going, I didn't know exactly what happened, but I didn't see, you know, nowhere that stood out as this could have happened, you know? And like I say, the reality, you know, when it really Really sat in when I seen my two kids. Did they were they aware at the time that they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they, they, they had yeah they had they was aware because they was at the uncle the grandma house. You know, I mean, who told them? You know, you don't know that or um maybe maybe the uncle, but I know that's where the sheriff went that night, and that's who you know let them know what happened and like I say by the time I got there you know I just see my two kids that's when it really sat in like this really happened so you know like my thing was let me figure out what happened so you know I go straight to the sheriff department that's the mm -hmm. from like I say from the shop to checking on my kid to the sheriff department and like, you know, and just only thing I heard was white truck, 911 call. And, you know, and like I say, when something like that happened, you know, that's why I went to the sheriff department to cooperate, you know, anything y'all, you know, what going on, you know, and like I say, you know, and you know, it's I don't I wouldn't know what else to do in a situation like that. You know, and like I say, I didn't have to. You know, didn't nobody get in contact with me from the you know any county agencies or anything. But that's why I went to them mm -hmm. to just check and see what happened. You know, and you know, ever since then. It's, I mean, it's seven, about seven years coming up. This year? But yeah, this year. And like I say, that's seven years. And the main thing I want to know from the, the seven years is where the 911 car. We, we ain't got to, whatever else in the scheme of equation of everything, it's seven years. I've been saying so something about. 911 call made. Definitely. Yeah, she made a 911 oh. call. And you know, and that's that's basically what's going on from day one, the nine one one call, you know, and you know, everything everything after that, you know, okay, but they've been withheld withholding this nine one one call for like I say, it's coming up seven years. What is so important in this 911 call that they don't want nobody to hear you know and that's so her family hadn't heard it either or nobody nobody has heard it but the law enforcement agency or to my knowledge to my knowledge like i say they they definitely not talking to me about anything going in the case so to my knowledge nobody I'm thinking even including certain law enforcement mm -hmm. haven't heard this call because like it has a death declaration on it. Okay. And okay, describe for the audience the declaration. Okay, all Let right. Them know okay, the death declaration on a nine one one call is basically 
unless they get somebody on trial for Ronnie's unalive. We'll say yeah. unalive. Yeah. So, okay. If they get somebody on trial, they can bring her 911 call up and use it as evidence as the per against the person that's on trial. Okay. That's the only re that's the only way they can bring a 911 call back up after a death declaration was declared on it. Okay. That's number one. And I, you know, I hear, oh, get a lawyer, get a this is a case that I have to go to the Supreme Court for is this 911 call. It's legal issues tied to the 911. It's, very, it's a lot of legal issues tied to a death declaration on a 911 call. And, like, you know, it's going to take a judge to give a death declaration. And, you know, I would think a judge like Stephen Bradley can give a death declaration on a 911 call. And see, that's where it get real tricky because I'm like, okay, I'm from day one. Let's talk about this 911 call. Where is the 911 call? Okay. And I'm I'm everywhere with this. So my thing is I'm I'm, I'm just checking on other 911 calls that's being released to the public. Like we talking about 99.9% of all 911 calls be released to the public. Mm -hmm. um, of all 911 calls, 99.9. .9. But y'all tell me, there's one. And I, I can understand, you know, basically, okay, well, this legal ass, this, okay. But I've heard a five year old kid on the phone with 911 describing how his parents were murdered in front of him. Did Google it. Okay. It's a five year old kid describing how his parents were murdered in front of him. And you, you telling me that that's released to the public. But you telling me a lady, like I say, we, we don't even have to bring all her accolades into it. Mm -hmm. Just a, a black lady was driving home, somebody. Drove behind her, shot through the back of her car, killed her, uh, unalived, <laughs> unalived her. And you telling me she had enough strength to call 911, being who she was, and let them know what was going on. And you telling me 99% of all 911 calls are released to the public. And you're telling me there's one call for this one black lady that's driving home to go to her family can't be released. We ain't got to talk about nothing else after that. This seven years. But it can't be released. I can't listen to it. So did you, did they, they have they questioned you? I mean, did they call you in to question? They questions? called me in, <laughs> they questioned me. I done went in and they ain't called me in. Question me some more. You know what I'm saying? This is what y'all need. Question me some more, man. You feel what I'm saying? Kind of like I say, it's tragic that this happens to a person like Ronnie, Verony Reed. It's tragic. But like I say, I, I like I say, they didn't have to call me. I, I'm going to the voluntarily. Man, listen. You know. Did they actually accuse you? Did, has there ever been a time when they actually said that they think that you or the person or the perpetrator? They can't actually accuse me. So they, they never said that. They know the fact. They can't actually accuse me. They can use language to the media and fear uh, where he won't cooperate with the law enforcement. You know, they, they can use language like that, but no, they can't accuse me because they know between a real, I ain't had nothing to do with nothing like that. Ain't nothing associated with me had nothing to do with nothing like that. So what had to do with something like that? I don't know. It was a 911 call. Let's just listen to 911 call. What about what about her family? How have they? Man, how uh, they, I, they, they okay, all right, all right. <laughs> that's that's an interesting question. <laughs> that, that's an interesting question because, like I say, 
at that point, you know, her family at that point, you know, me, like I say, man, I've been together for 17 years and not one person in her family ever had not one problem with me in life and especially not pertaining to her or my kids. Now, so now I say, um, I'm asking you that, I ask you that question. Um, you know, a lot of stuff comes through the barbershop now. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, barbershop. Had, we didn't have yeah, that yeah. Uh, previous conversation. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, this is, like I say, this is but, uh, candid. I've heard now, like I've heard this, and like I said, I don't answer any questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, but they, I've heard that the family feels a certain type of way about and uh, maybe feeling that you may be guilty. So I mean, oh, I just, mean, just, just, let me just say this: uh, for the family members that do, yeah, if the, if that's the case, yeah, if that's I don't case. know if it's the case or not. Yeah, I don't yeah. know any of her family members. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's the case for the family members, yes, that may feel that you are guilty yeah. or you may have some involvement in yeah. the situation uh, what would you have to say to them I mean just what would you have to say to them if you if they feeling that way exactly how would you word something to say to them uh I me mean, how would I word something to say to them ah uh, <laughs> what would the motive be you know like what would the motive be let me do something like this and uh, but I, at, to your knowledge, nobody in the family feels. I mean, ain't nobody came at me like that. You know, like I say, it's a difference between saying they feel a type of way, you know, about me than maybe directly approaching you. Yeah, yeah, and maybe and distancing feeling, themselves now. Like I say, I, I don't know how they feel. I don't talk to basically her side of the family because, like I say, you know. Was that always the case? No, no, nah, nah, like. You know, since like this no, definitely yes, definitely since this happened. You okay. know, cause like I say, you know, this Ronnie, you know, and ain't nobody standing with me to say, you know, this then supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, and um, I don't. It's like if y'all ain't standing with me, how y'all feel about it? what happened to her, you know, and like I say, I've been knowing these people from the time we got together to have like 17 years. Mm -hmm. And like, I never had a problem and like, they never had a problem with me, I, you know, and like I say, I just, I never would understand why, you know, would you not fight for what happened to Ronnie, you know, and like I say, you know, like, like I say, I had anything, you know, they would have had my black ass locked up, you know, but like I say, um, with her family, like I say, I, I don't know how they feel about me, but I know the, how they should feel about her. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Okay, let's get jested, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, so. So you think the focus more on you and not necessarily trying to get actual justice for the tragedy? I mean, with her family, I don't know, you know. So like you don't say, communicate with them, period? I, I mean... I don't, I don't need to communicate with them because, like I say, if you know, like I say, Ryan ain't never hurt nobody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. should, you know, I if I if like you look at it like me, everybody should be out. Hey man, you know, everybody should be outraged about it in the community. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I you like man. me, you know, she but was the person I can I can yeah yeah about being angry. That's what I'm saying. So like I say, mm -hmm. and and in a case of that, you know, I look at it like you know, it's. If you are mad at me, still be out saying, you know, we need justice for her. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, like I say, and yeah, like I say, deserves justice. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I say, you know, barbershop talk. People say a lot. You know, like I say, I, it, it haven't came back to me personally. Like for us, it, you know, but, but say it, yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. But like I say, you know, I mean, my thing is, let's get justice at this point. You know. What, you know, this 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 has carried on way too long. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it's just, you know, a tragic event. And like I say, I'm you know, I I'm gonna stand hundred percent behind what I believe in. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like whoever did this to my wife, it needs to be jested, you know, and you know, that's the only thing I'm gonna go for. And you know, and like I say, everybody knows that's the only thing I'm going to go for when it comes to Veronique 
read, you know, that that's it, you know. But like I say, you know, for anybody that ever questioned me, you know, like I say, I asked what motive. I ain't no insurance money. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. At that point, I, a three-year-old kid. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. This ain't like, this is like a three-year-old kid. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I got to take sole responsibility for a three-year-old kid. You see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, I don't know now, man, that'll put that responsibility solely on himself. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like I say, it, 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 it's that point where, you know, People gonna talk, but you know, my thing is, they get jested, you know. Like I say, my mama been told me, you know, people gonna talk about you for God. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I might, you know, I might, you know, <laughs> I might wear a toy shirt in here instead of designer. You feel what I'm saying? They're gonna talk about me if the shirt was tore up. Get what they're gonna say about the designer shirt, man. That shirt, uh, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, they're gonna talk about you God. You know what I mean? So, you know, my main thing is just, man, look at this. Jester, you know. How man. have you been dealing with it since it, since it, since that tragic day? I mean, just being straight up, it's a it's a it's a tragedy so rare that I can't even imagine. Yeah, that's what I say. It's a it's it's a tra- it, it, it's, it's it's so rare that how how do I supposed to deal with it? You see what I'm saying? It ain't no <laughs> ain't no guideline to say no. Nah, this how you gotta deal with. It. Somebody killing your wife, um, somebody unalive your wife, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it, it ain't no book, it ain't no guideline. I'm day to day. I mean, that just the truth of the matter. I'm, I'm day to day, you know, and you know, get what? I keep on saying tomorrow, though. So it is what it is. But yeah, it you know, like I say, you know, it's. It's tough, like I say, you know, and like I said, a lot of people, you know, like right before Ronnie, a year, a year and a half before that, you know, I lost my mother, you know, so yeah. I, you know, and that's a year and a half, you know, and like like I say, that's that's tough, you know, and you know, not even being able to, you know, like I say. You know, my mother died, you know, and like I say, Ryan was really, you know, that, that was my credit. You feel what I'm saying? That's why me and her, yeah, that was why, that's why me and her love got tighter, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't got my mama no more, you know, so, you know. Rough. Yeah. yeah, I lost my mom too. Yeah, that was. I lost my mom, boy. Yeah. Y'all had to be up to. But, you know, life be life. Yeah. What can you do? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I look at it, you know. So, you know, but like I say, you know, I'd rather be a person with something to lose than a person with nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm, you know, even though I feel like I lost it, how? You know, it, I can't imagine. You know, I can't imagine what you feel. So, I ain't gonna even try to pretend I got no. Yeah, like I say, it's tough. You know, and like I say, you know, but what you gonna do? What can you do? Like you said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that, man. But yeah, definitely. Like I say, you know, you know, I want to come do the interview, same as you want. Yeah, man. Yeah, it took a while so. for us to get it together. Well, you know, we got it together, you know. So, like I say, you know, I just want to put something out there, and, you know, you want to put your material. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad you let me use your platform. And like I say, it's it's all about, you know, they don't want to talk about it, but, you know, somebody got to help somebody. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity, and like, you know, for the barber gang, you know, like I say, I don't know how old you are, but you've been cutting house and I was three, Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so you know, but I, yeah, <laughs> hey, man, you, you, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man, you know, like I say, you know. I don't know no other way. All right, all right. <laughs> well, 
pleasure, dude. I definitely appreciate that, man. <laughs> I appreciate the people tuning in. I ain't looked at nobody's question, comments, you know. I check them out later, but yeah, I appreciate y'all. But uh, yeah, that's it, man. They went live. So, yeah. All right. That was great, Tim. Yeah, man, that shit, though. You started. Dominique called me at least 20 times while I was in the line. I swear to God. That's your oldest? <laughs> nah, that's the baby. That she about ready to go. Mm, mm.